Ducking for cover, the diminutive ungulate hides from lurking predators. It browses for fallen fruits on the forest floor, and using its 14 toes to balance on the marshy earth, it chews through large soft leaves, much like a deer. This is Hyracotherium, the first horse. Er, I guess it's Eohippus? We'll get into it. Looking at the little lad, you would be forgiven for forgetting its phylogenetic function. Even the first finder of the foxhound-sized fossil, Richard Owen, failed to fit the fossil into its factual phylogeny. Owens believed that the diminutive fossils he found were ancestors to the modern Hyrax and named them accordingly. It wasn't until O.C. Marsh made his way to New Mexico that the Hyracotherium was rehomed to the head of the horse family. The horse family here is used not to describe things which carry the horse's name, but rather the phylogenetic group which horses inhabit. Within the class Mammalia, we find the order Perissodactyla, which includes all the odd-toed ungulates. Ungulates are hoofed animals, like cows, pigs, goats, rhinos, and horses. Rhinos and horses have uneven numbers of toes on their limbs, differentiating them from the even-toed artiodactyls. Within Perissodactyla are three families, Rhinoceratidae, Tapiridae, and the focus of the day, Equidae. The first genus of Equidae that evolved is Hyracotherium, also known as Eohippus. Like our ancient ancestors, it is now extinct. Unlike the first hominids, it hails not from Africa, but from America. Additionally, age accents our differences from Equidae where Hominidae arose about 17 million years prior to the present. Equidae came just a few million years after the dinosaurs died out, about 55 million years ago. After the dinosaurs died, the tiny rodent-like mammals remained and flourished, radiating out to fill the niches that the dinosaurs had once held. Our story starts with the Cenozoic, the period of time from the extinction of land dinosaurs to today. The difficulty in discussing dates so distant is that minutes, months, and even millennia are way too short. When you're working with so many zeros, it makes sense to date things not by time, but by periods. When you're working with billions of years, a short period is still going to be several million years. This is why we break up the Earth's history into eons, eras, periods, epochs, and ages. It's easy to see visually, though unintuitive, that these measurements aren't equally long. An epoch isn't a unit and shouldn't be thought of as such. Instead, think of them like historical periods. When I say Cenozoic, think Renaissance. In the early Eocene, Hyracotherium was hardly hound-sized. Now horses halt their heightening five or six feet high. Illumination to their elongation lies within the lore of our elastic climate. Looking at the landfills of lion graphs we have about our climate, one thing is quite clear. It changes constantly. Quick changes over the course of tens of thousands of years are bad news for Earth's inhabitants. Here, in the Pleistocene, we see the end of the Ice Age, which brought with it the deaths of almost all of America's megafauna. Scrolling back to Hyracotherium's heyday, we see a general trend toward temperate climates. As the Earth cooled, carbon being sequestered in rock, we see the hot tropical jungle trains that once stretched from pole to pole being replaced by prairie lands. But Hyracotherium evolved to carefully pick through forest debris, not stampede across grassy prairies. As his habitat shifted, he had to change too. Hyracotherium could no longer hide amongst the forest browse. He had to run. Those Hyracotherium species that happened to be better at running were, on average, better at staying safe than their stealthier sister species. Over time, as the forest shrank, Hyracotherium species suited to stealth slowly slipped into extinction as their running relatives started racing to become better runners over the endless seas of grass. By faster runners breeding more often, over thousands of generations, the resulting runners ran their way into a new genus as Mesohippus shook its mighty mane. Ontologically obfuscated from our eyes in the early Oligocene's rock, Mesohippus is preserved. We know this, as well as the approximate dates of existence for other Equidae, because Earth crust formed in a particular order. The rock deposited on the surface at the end of the Oligocene is different from the rock deposited in the Cretaceous. 
Because we found Mesohippus fossils in rocks dating back to the Oligocene, we know when Mesohippus roamed around Reno. Mesohippus was distinct from Eohippus in that its teeth were more molar-like, meaning it munched through more membranous grasses than soft forest leaves. Additionally, all Equidae are equipped with an odd number of toes on their back feet, but Eohippus had four on each forelimb. Mesohippus makes do with only three on its front limbs at all. In fact, this reduction was beneficial to the fitness of the horse. Counterintuitively, horse limbs are less likely to break during acceleration when they have few toes. The reasons for this are complicated and involve equations borrowed from beam mechanics. These mechanics of beam breaking are brought to light by Brianna Horse, who speaks to it in this paper. From Mesohippus, glazing over dozens of Equidae species, we come to the genus Merikippus, which lived in the late Miocene. This horse is the first that really looks like a modern horse. It had the long face associated with Equus, and was almost as big as modern breeds. Merikippus still has three front hooves. If we look closely though, it's impossible for the horse to put any weight onto such short side hooves, but they were still generating these vestigial side toes. The creation of that extra bone takes a lot of energy, and as noted by McCorse's paper, may even have caused enough drag when running to prove deleterious to Merikippus' health. This extra bone cost, coupled with the drag, caused the side hooves to continue to shrink from species to species until our modern all-American Equus genus was born, with all its horses, donkeys, and zebras.